Okay, so here's a special type of uh, psychotronic detector, uh, gravity wave amplifier, and the, the two are actually related. And um, I'm measuring it on a slow time scale on the oscilloscope, and it has some kind of instability. Sometimes that goes away. I'm still working on it as an experimental unit, but it um, has an on and off switch. I can turn the power on and off to it. And it has uh, a gain controller and an offset, so I can change the offset. I like to bring it close, close to zero so I can zoom in and see what's going on. So we'll try to get the uh, zero point set here. And uh, so let's let's test this guy. So I have. Um, this high voltage generator that I made, I show how to make that in one of the videos. And see our detector, our detector here is shielded. There, I'll wait till the, the um, signal stabilizes. Okay. And so when I turn this high voltage generator on, oh, there, I'll wait till this trace comes up. Okay. So I'll bring this near here and I'll turn it on. You can see it's creating some kind of a high frequency waveform that our amplifier is picking up. So let me uh, actually adjust this so we can zoom in on that. I'm going to increase the time scale so we can see what the waveform looks like. Okay. Okay, there we go. And see, I turn this guy on, bring it close to the detector. And we're getting some kind of ripple, even though this, this is pretty well shielded. I mean, I have an aluminum shield around the detector part, and the box is shielded, and it goes out a shielded cable to the scope. So here we'll turn this guy in, on again. See that? We're picking up some kind of waveform from this uh, high-voltage DC generator even though, well, there is a high frequency uh, generator inside of this because it has some kind of voltage multiplier. But it's picking that up through through the shielding. Okay. I'm still looking at that. There could be skin effects. But um, it's a very interesting amplifier. But uh, more importantly, it uh, amplifies psychotronic energy. I'm going to try to set up to demonstrate that. So let me get that working. Okay. okay, so now we have our signal going on slow time scale. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to take this detector and I'm going to breathe on it. So as soon as I start to breathe on it, you can see it deflects down. And then it starts to go back up. Okay. Here, I'll grab the detector. Okay, I'm touching it with my fingers. The signal's going down. Okay, now I'll release. Okay. And I think it'll take a while for it to recover because the energy flows into the detector. Okay. It's very low right now. It should recover in a second. Okay, so this detector is very sensitive to psychotronic energy. Or life energy. Okay. Right now I just have it recovering. You can see how it's coming back up to the baseline. Actually, let me just move the baseline up a little bit. We'll restart this trace. Okay. So here's the baseline. And here's our detector down here. I'll let it run for a little bit. Now I'm going to grab the detector. The detector head's right about here. You can see as soon as I grab it, it starts picking up the energy and uh, charging up the detector and oh it's becoming unstable now okay so I'm gonna let off on it 
and it takes a little while for the energy to stop flowing in. And so definitely a major deflection. This detector is actually uh, very sensitive to life energy and uh, also picks up very high frequency gravity waves, electrogravity waves I should say, that penetrate through the uh, conductor. Okay, see it's starting to recover now. So this is a time scale that psychotronic energy, psychotronic energy or life energy conducts like an electrical current, but it conducts very slowly, almost like heat. But this detector is not sensitive to heat. It is sensitive to um, very high frequency oscillations, like I showed in the um, uh, high voltage generator. And uh, let me let me do another example in a second. So it's recovering now. Okay. Let that recover for a little bit. Okay, have my mini soldering iron here. And we'll just see, see it's hot enough to melt solder. It's melting the solder there. Okay, so let's take it and here's our, we'll touch it to the detector here. sensitivity. Okay. I'll touch it down here. Oh, okay, very interesting. I guess it responds to very high temperatures of the soldering iron as well. Okay, seems to go off scale. Okay. Let it recover for a little bit. Soldering iron is way hotter than my fingers, but yet it has a pretty good response to my fingers when I touch it. Okay, let, me, let me zoom back in. Okay, there's the trace going up. I'm going to grab the detector with my fingers. You can see it starts going down. I grab it. Okay. And it really, I know it's in there and it shouldn't really be temperature sensitive. Uh, I mean, my fingers are only slightly above room temperature and it's having a major deflection. Okay. Also, Reichenbach did say that heat can uh, release OD energy. And so it could be that the soldering iron does uh, produce OD energy. <coughs> anyway, very interesting. Huh? I'm still looking into this. Okay, here's our mini Tesla coil. And I have it unplugged, and right now I'm just bringing it near the detector over here. Let's take a look at the trace. As soon as I plug it in, I can do this with one hand. Oh, come on. Okay, there we go. Oh, I guess it went off scale. Let's see if it will recover. 
Okay, there we go. So the signal is huge, huge RF signal with the Tesla coil operating here. Ouch! Ow, ow, ow. Okay, let me just set this thing down here for a second. And uh, we'll just tune into this to see what kind of frequencies we're looking at. Okay, and let me, okay, there we go, there's our oscillations, let me shut this thing down, so I don't burn out something, I just put the scope on hold, well, I thought it was interesting, it actually has some other high frequency ripple on it, but let's put the cursors on this, and see, what kind of frequency response we're getting out of our detector. So this this Tesla coil here, this one, little mini one, operates at about 3.5 megahertz. And uh, there we see 3.5 megahertz. So this detector is a high speed detector. And it actually, there's a ripple on top of it, which uh, I captured before. But that was about, I think about 40 megahertz. I'm not sure if that's an artifact of the detector or what. It's hard to see it here, but you can... Let's... Okay. I guess we can see the dots. Let me move the cursors around. And we can see it's about... It's on the ripple right there. That ripple on top of the Tesla coil, which I'm sure can't be generated by the Tesla coil because it's a resonant, cap, a resonant coil. I don't think it has a resonant frequency at that high. It's very uniform too. It's a very continuous sine wave, about 40 megahertz. So I'm not sure if that's an artifact of the detector or something that the Tesla coil is generating a secondary effect in the uh, psychotronic field or what. But definitely very interesting. Okay. Anyway, so I'll just continue to do some more testing with this uh, psychotronic detector and. Okay, so I've got this detector working uh, fairly uh, um, stably now, and uh, it's actually very sensitive to breathing. If I, uh, here, let me here, get a baseline here, and let me breathe on it. So you can definitely see it has a deflection. It starts going down where I started breathing on it, and um, that starts to recover afterwards. And of course, I believe this is due to psychotronic energy in uh, your breath, and uh, the detector picks that up and it has a deflection due to it. And it certainly can't really be due to heat because it's got a shielding on the outside of it, and then it's got more. Uh, thermal shielding on the inside before it even gets to the detector. It's hard to believe that just a little bit of heat from your breath could uh, cause a deflection due to heat. Here, let me try that one more time. Okay, so I have a detector down there. And this time I'll just bring a straw in and try to blow so you can watch the detector deflect as I blow on it. definitely see it deflects downward when I was blowing on it with the straw and now it will start to recover. Okay. I can zoom in a little bit more on that. Okay, so there's the trace right there. And uh, get this a little bit closer here. I'll start blowing on this. Okay. Definitely a major deflection. Let me run this at a little bit slower time scale so we can record more, more of the motion of this guy. And I'll get it 
Or 20 millivolts. Okay, there we go. And uh, here's our detector coming up. And let me blow on it. Definitely a major deflection. And I believe this is due to the psychotronic energy in my breath that I'm transmitting down this little straw. It's actually a piece of heat shrink. And uh, so when I'm blowing on it, it charges the detector up and changes the uh, electrical characteristics of the device I'm using. And then once the energy dissipates, then the um, detector starts to recover and starts creating, uh, starts rising again on the signal. And I have to run this in a very stable mode so that it um, doesn't jump. Okay, let, let me just try it one more time. Okay, so definitely a major deflection. And I stop blowing. And now the trace is going to start to recover again. Okay. Definitely very interesting. Okay. And this is on the five seconds per division scale. Let's see, there's some other things that it's picking up, some spikes and other things, which I believe is a uh, some type of other disturbances in the field. Okay. So I'll continue to do research on this and uh, see if we can uh, find some more interesting things. Anyway, this is uh, Dr. Janes and thanks for watching.